Hi, welcome to the Light of Deception. Today is an exciting day. I want to tell you a little bit about what's happening in for the site in in 2020. So coming into January of 2020, we'll have a studio set up here. So in the same space, but it will be a studio, and therefore um, it will be uh, hopefully much more professional in content. Um, that way, we're going from moving from um, reading on the cell phone to reading on. Um, more of a computer laptop so in the desk so I'm hoping that um, everything becomes a little bit more crisp and a little bit more clear articulations being uh, dealt with lighting um, sound everything is should be coming out in January of 2020 if you could come alongside me in prayer I'd really appreciate that I'm going to head to launching the um, website navigator I'm sure that you've seen out there already. Um, I'm going to shorten that and jump some of that to the back of the presentations, the YouTube videos, and therefore if you have not visited this site before and you want more information about the site, you're going to hang on until the end of the segment and go ahead and look at the rest of the content that's offered on the site. But for now on, we're going to be just jumping off. We're going to start with a really short segment and um, go right inside um, the depths of the site. Today, I'm excited that we're moving into the main page um, from the cover page, which, which would be the front page that really talks about what the site's going to be about. And this main page has been here since 2000, August of 2016 when I started creating the site. So we're going to get into the ins and outs of the sites. We're really going to be breaking down deception at this point. We went through all the isms on the site, the Christian isms, the religious isms, the mystical isms, the political isms, and all these isms that are related to deception in some form. And then maybe just a couple of, to a few of these isms are steadfast. So we're going to get into the depths of the reason the site was open right now and then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to read some scripture to you that's on the site. This way we're navigating through the site and, and I'm explaining as we're going through why the things are laid out the way they are. The front page is again just kind of looking at that was um, a breakdown of what the site's about. Next to that was the free gift of salvation. Next to that's the Bible. Next to that was the Christian isms. Now their most important thing is salvation and then getting into the Word of God, the literal translation of the Word of God, you know, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, page by page, from beginning to end. And then getting to the Christianism is just a breakdown. Of course, I just said not all of them are steadfast. Um, a few of them are, but looking at the breakdowns of the isms, I think it's so important to be able to define your terms. As you're coming out of deception, you're going to be bewildered and wondering what in the world's going on because you thought you were serving God the whole time. And you maybe even thought you were serving God with your whole heart. And then all of a sudden you hit a wall and you realize that whatever you're doing is deceptive and you're following the wrong spirit. So I'm going to help you navigate through that since I'm seven years out now, just coming up on seven years. Um, right, right around, um, I would say, December of 2012, I was just puzzled. And then so moving into 2013, the questions of the who, what, where, when, why, how did this all happen started. So here I am coming up on um, seven years. I have been able to open the light of deception to share it. My stories, it did take a while to get that up and running in 2016th of August of 2016. So if you kind of look at the number, that was about coming up on three years later. And here we are seven years later. I just bought the domain name about a year ago for the Light of Deception in um, December of 2018. In the first um, three years the site was open, it reached about two to 3,000 people. Now that I bought the domain name and really put everything um, together and um, it was kind of a small website and then I refurbished it and reset it out there with the domain name and it's now reached, reached probably about 35,000 people. It hasn't even been a year yet. So that is what God can do with you moving in a steadfast way, um, stepping out in faith. It, um, things don't happen overnight, I, they can, but it's that just that steadfastness of um, him trusting you with the smaller things and then as you're maturing and growing and faithful, not perfect, in your walk, then um, new opportunities will come your way. And so here we go, and as you think that nothing's going on and who's listening, um, God is so incredibly faithful. So in the perfect timing, the timing is right, not your timing, but God's timing is right, then things will be what they're supposed to be. 
and um, we just have to be patient and faithful and steadfast in these days. So here we go. I'm going to go back to the course, you know, really going back to the foundation of why the site was open. It says, false teachings within today's churches. I have learned from experience that even within the Christian churches, deception abounds. My main focus here is to discuss some of those false teachings and practices. How does one differentiate the truth from the lie? The two most important things are prayer and measuring everything against the Word of God. So the focal of scripture on this site will always be 2 Corinthians 11.14. I have it here in the King James Version of the Bible. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of a light. That was what the light of deception came from, the false light. Okay, warning signs. Now, there's this was done um, in 2016, August of 2016, so obviously there's much more going on today. Warning signs, seeker-friendly in the emergent churches, right? So progressivism, liberalism, liberal theology in, in the church, um, all those things are packaged, bring in the world to bring in the world, those kind of things, the church growth models, the movements, the agendas, all these things are in the church. Many churches today are about entertaining and changing teaching styles to cater to the masses. They water down the very word of God and add in worldly influences to bring in large numbers of people. The danger with entertaining and inaccurately teaching the word of God is missing the main point of building disciples. This can cause immature Christians that are not yet grounded in the word of God to be deceived. It can even deceive the elect, the people that have been steadfast, because you will become part of that, right? And then you grow in your maturity, and even the, some mature Christians um, fall into this, all these worldly influences, or they're deceived, and they go off course for a while, and they can come back steadfast. Okay, so Isaiah 5.20 is also the King James Version of the Bible. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The light of deception, that's exactly what it's about. And then I always put on here is eyes to see and ears to hear. Then you get into the main page. There's another segment there. There's another little link there that's called um, Just Deception. The first thing I put at the top is the PowerPoint I put together early on as I was coming through um, probably in 2017, 2018, um, I was out there just asking all the questions, praying, um, reading the Bible, seeking for people that have been out there for a long period of time. Um, I always say 20, 30, 40 plus years teaching about deception, putting the words out there. Of course, none of these people have been perfect all the way through. None of us are perfect and are, none of us are all knowing. But we are putting the word out there to warn you in these days, deception is rampant and it is getting increasingly dark, but it looks, it, it, it feels like light and it's not. So it's the counterfeit, the anti, right? Christ. So here we go. This one's called Inside the Global Church, taking a look at global deception. How does the church fit in? Go to PowerPoints. That's the first one I have there on, under the PowerPoints. And my goodness gracious, you'll find some incredible teachings there about deception. And it will give you a foundation to, and you might say, wow, okay, so now I get it. Okay, 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. This one says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap up for themselves teachers having itchy ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. That is the New King James Version of the Bible. Then there's Matthew 24, 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceive you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Remember the Garden of Eden, they walked in the cool in the day with God and, you know, the serpent of all did deceive Eve and then uh, ultimately deceive, deception, um, Adam took a, a bite of that unforbidden um, fruit, right, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
So remember, if they can fall, um, so can you. Okay, so definition of deception. This is 1A. The act of causing someone to accept as true or valid what is false or invalid. The act of deceiving, resorting to falsehood and deception. Use deception to lead the classified information or leak the classified information. B, the fact or condition of being deceived, the deception of his audience. So a mass scale of deception. Some people are really good at that. They're charismatic. Okay, they have a lot of charisma so they can really fool you. Here's another one just breaking down some of the words under deception. So deceive, misled, deluded, beguiled means to lead astray or frustrate using usually being under handedness deceived implies imposing a false idea or belief that causes ignorance bewilderment and helplessness try to deceive me about the cost misled implies a leading astray that may or may not be intentional this is the thing too, some people are misleading you and they have no idea that they're deceived themselves and some do know they're misleading you. I was misled by the confusion or the confusing sign, deluded, implied, deceiving so thoroughly as to obscure the truth. We were deluded into thinking we were safe, beguiled, stresses, the use of charm and just like I was saying, and persuasion and deceiving was beguiled by false promises. There you go. That is so much in the church today. Obviously, you're going to have it in the world. And then the church is just taken in the world. So that's just the mix of the world and the church. The church is not really the church anymore. It's more of a community organization, right? Community deception is what it is. 2 Corinthians 11.4 4, For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. That's going on too. Galatians 1, 8, 9, but even if we or an angel from heaven preaches another gospel to you that what we have preached to you, let him be accursed as we have said before. So now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. That is so important under deception. And the enemy, if he cannot destroy the churches, the way he does that is he plays down the word of God, drops out the word of God, adds to the word of God, puffs up the ego of the people that he's calling to himself and using. Um, so it's an ego driven. I'm arriving. I'm all that. Um, it's prideful, it's arrogant. Um, if you're following the true scripture, you're following the true God, the creator of all things, right? You are humble, meek. You're at that point where Paul was at. What a wretched man I am. I will to do what is right, but my flesh is weak. And therefore, God can use you in your own. Your fallen state is amazing, but he does. So all credit goes to him. Any goodness that comes out of you is from him. So lead people to the word of God. Lead people to God and not yourself. Last thing that you're going to find is a contact page where you're going to say, where it's going to actually lead you to um, writing, if you want to, your own testimony. So um, if deception, maybe asking a question. So it says, if you have any questions or you'd like to share your own personal deception story, you may leave a message below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And then there's an area for you to do so. Now, if I do not have an answer to a question that you have asked, I will come alongside you in prayer. I will try to help you out and maybe guide you somewhere else if I don't have the answers to, to your question. 
but I'm here if I can to help prayfully help help you as you're coming out of deception if you're a new person coming out of deception or if you're somebody that's been out of deception for a lengthy period of time and you still like to share I'd love to hear from you the site was open to gather everybody else's information that's been out there steadfastly for a number of years um, any I, most people on the site have been out um, tr reaching people for 20 plus years and um, you just see it coming into play all that they were warning about um, all these years some of them are going back into the 80s you know 1980s or before the 1970s when there you might even find people on the site that are into um, especially in the films that in the documentaries you'll find here they're warning way past way before that even so I hope you start looking the world is getting dark and it appears out as light, but it gets darker and darker, and more and more of the sin is accepted, and what call, God calls an abomination is now just bring, being brought into the, the church and really being taken over. You don't have to change. Now you, then it always says that, that we're supposed to bring the culture into the church, and really bringing the, going out into the culture and bringing the gospel, bringing the word of God, bringing the truth. The church should be a place where you're learning and growing and changing day by day. Right? I pray that you're in a church that's steadfast, that's teaching all the way through the Bible, is not dropping out Genesis or the end of Revelation, is not teaching that things happen, everything happened in AD 70, so it's not worth looking at, or anything under eschatology is now considered a sin to teach because it, it's divisive. And who's to know kind of that those kind of things or the church has replaced is israel and all of a sudden israel doesn't matter anymore all these things are so incredibly confusing and the ones that are talking about we are already in the kingdom so the kingdom now theology instead of occupying in these days and doing what god calls us to do i usually end with this is not to take a prideful stance. The promises that God give, gave to Israel are forever from generation to generation. Everything that he said would happen is happening, has already happened or is being fulfilled now. So if you understand eschatology and you're starting to look at the signs of the times, you'll know the season so you can look up as your redemption draws near. I pray that you understand what the free gift of salvation is. It's there for you. I have Dr. Andy Woods teaching about the free gift of salvation and also Pastor Chris Quintana from Calvary Old Path teaching about, um, teaching actually through the entirety of the Bible and definitely in Romans. If you go under the free gift, you'll find their teachings there. And also if you go under booklets, you'll find them again, um, Pastor's Point of View with um, Dr. Andy Woods. It will be talking about some of the stuff that's going on um, in the world related to scripture, bringing you back to the Bible. And then um, Pastor Chris Quintana is right there as well. And you'll find um, answers for today are there for as well, well there. And so you can go in and they'll be talking about more topical things there, or you can be on the site and just going with him through um, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I hope all these uh, steadfast teachers, remember they're not perfect, so everything that anybody teaches you, me, or anybody else, you take it back to the Word of God to see if those things are so. Be a bringing in these days. And I pray all these things help you stay out of the light of deception. Until next time. <music>